I think the subject which will be of most importance politically is mass psychology. Mass psychology is, scientifically speaking, not a very advanced study. This study is immensely useful to practical men, whether they wish to become rich or to acquire the government. It is, of course, as a science, founded upon individual psychology, but hitherto it has employed rule of thumb methods which were based upon a kind of intuitive common sense. Its importance has been enormously increased by the growth of modern methods of propaganda. Of these the most influential is what is called education. Religion plays a part, though a diminishing one. The press, the cinema and the radio play an increasing part. Bertrand Russell, 1952. Literacy Campaigns for World Government from UNESCO its purpose and its philosophy. From this global aim, another principle immediately follows. It is that UNESCO should devote special attention to the leveling up of educational, scientific and cultural facilities in all backward sectors where these are below the average, whether these be geographical regions, or underprivileged sections of a population. To use another metaphor, it must attempt to let in light on the world's dark areas. The reason for this is plain. For one thing it will be impossible for humanity to acquire a common outlook if large sections of it are the illiterate inhabitants of a mental world entirely different from that in which a fully educated man can have his being, a world of superstition and petty tribalism in place of one of scientific advance and possible unity. Thus mass campaigns against illiteracy and for a common fundamental education must form part of UNESCO's program. Further. A satisfactory common scale of values can obviously not be attained so long as large sections of mankind are preoccupied with the bare material and physiological needs of food, shelter, and health. On reflection, however, it is speedily seen that a campaign for mere literacy is not enough. It needs to be linked with the general system of education, and, among illiterates above school age, to be coupled with general social education, notably in relation to health current methods of agriculture, and citizenship. That is why, in UNESCO's program, literacy campaigns have been merged in a more comprehensive study of fundamental education. Public relations as adult education. To conclude with a more immediate problem, UNESCO is proposing to support further study and experiment in regard to the discussion group method. Every extension of democracy, whether political, economic, or cultural, makes it more necessary to have a general awareness among the people at large of the problems, tasks, and possibilities which confront them. The discussion group, properly led and properly serviced by bodies such as the Bureau of Current Affairs, seems to be one of the most fruitful methods to this end, and UNESCO must investigate its potentialities in different types of societies and for different special purposes. A converse problem is that of public relations, notably in government. These are in modern conditions indispensable agencies of adult education for citizenship. But they can readily degenerate into organs of justification for government departments or ministers, and can equally readily be distorted into mere propaganda organizations. The most careful study of their uses and abuses, their possibilities and limitations, from the joint angle of education and social science, is of great importance and considerable urgency at the present stage in human evolution higher education for inferior types. But it would also, we may assume, have to include provision for some new type of higher education for those with quantitatively lower IQs and aptitudes, who yet desire or are desired by society, to devote some of their post-adolescent period to further education instead of to earning a living. And when the time comes, it will obviously be for UNESCO to help in working out the requirements, both in content and methods of this new type of higher education. This is clearly manifested in our current Western society, where young people attend university to attain little more than base level indoctrination and acclimate themselves to living with debt. UNESCO in the nursery. One other item which UNESCO should put on its program as soon as possible is the study of the application of psychoanalysis and other schools of deep psychology to education. This would mean an extension of education backwards from the nursery school to the nursery itself. 
The importance of education, especially of the very young was well emphasized by Lord Bertrand Russell in his book The Impact of Science on Society. Russell was a renowned British philosopher and mathematician who was an adamant internationalist and worked extensively on the education of young children. He was the founder of the Pugwash movement which used the specter of Cold War nuclear annihilation to push for world government. Among many other prizes, Russell was awarded the Nobel Prize in Literature in 1950 and, like Julian Huxley, UNESCO's Kalinga Prize. From Bertrand Russell's 1950 book The Impact of Science on Society, what is essential in mass psychology is the art of persuasion. If you compare a speech of Hitler's with a speech of say Edmund Burke, you will see what strides have been made in the art since the 18th century. What went wrong formerly was that people had read in books that man is a rational animal, and framed their arguments on this hypothesis. We now know that limelight and a brass band do more to persuade than can be done by the most elegant train of syllogisms. It may be hoped that in time anybody will be able to persuade anybody of anything if he can catch the patient young and is provided by the state with money and equipment. It is to be expected that advances in physiology and psychology will give governments much more control over individual mentality than they now have even in totalitarian countries. Fitch laid it down that education should aim at destroying free will, so that, after pupils have left school, they shall be incapable, throughout the rest of their lives, of thinking or acting otherwise than as their schoolmasters would have wished. But in his day this was an unattainable ideal, what he regarded as the best system in existence produced Karl Marx. In future such failures are not likely to occur where there is dictatorship. Diet, injections, and injunctions will combine, from a very early age, to produce the sort of character and the sort of beliefs that the authorities consider desirable, and any serious criticism of the powers that be will become psychologically impossible. Even if all are miserable, all will believe themselves happy, because the government will tell them that they are so. Russell also made it clear the importance of not allowing the public to know how their convictions were generated. Although this science will be diligently studied, it will be rigidly confined to the governing class. The populace will not be allowed to know how its convictions were generated. When the technique has been perfected, every government that has been in charge of education for a generation will be able to control its subjects securely without the need of armies or policemen.